Hey guys, welcome back. Today we are going to be talking about how everything is connected, especially in Odoo. We're really going to be talking about how all relational databases work, but we're specifically going to be looking at how you can use this understanding in Odoo, and we're going to use Excel to help us a little bit there. So by the end of this, you should understand a whole lot more about Odoo, a little bit more about Excel, and a fair amount about how they can work together and make something awesome. Now, this may sound kind of boring to you and you may want to skip this video, but I wouldn't if I were you because understanding this about Odoo and understanding it well will help you to be able to import your data better into Odoo, saving you time. And also it will allow you to set up Odoo better for your company, bringing the information that you want to a specific place, making sure that you're not duplicating that information in other places. These are all good things. And make sure you stick around to the end because I'm sure there's a burning question about how relational databases work that you'll want to know before you go messing around inside of Odoo. So let's start at the very base. Odoo is made up of collections of data that they call models or tables in a lot of databases, which are basically, basically little spreadsheets in the background that are connected to each other in different ways. So we have one model is sales orders. Another is sales order lines. Another one is products. Another one is contacts. And these are linked together in different ways. Each of these models or tables have different fields. Okay, some of them are dates, some of them are just text, some of them though are these relationships which allow us to connect things up and pull data from different places. Now before we get deeper into the connections and relationships, let's talk about the beauty of the fact that on any of these tables, any of these tables inside of Odoo, we can add additional fields, which leads to almost endless customizability for us and our company. So say we want to track something different on a sales order. Well, we can simply add another field for that. Basically, oh, hey, do we want to know which trade show we got this sale from or this lead from? Well, we can add that field so that somebody can come in and set it. We can make that as required. Odoo is highly customizable in this way to where we can add additional attributes or values that we're collecting on any model. It's pretty awesome. The easiest way to add a field may be up for debate, but not for me. So if I wanted to add a field to sales orders that I wanted to collect, I can simply go into studio here. I'm going to make sure I'm in developer mode first because that makes it easier. But I go to studio and I'd come in and I'd say, OK, I want a new character field, which adds basically another column to our spreadsheet or table here. And then we want to give it a nice name, which is, you know, um, one nice thing about this customer absolutely ridiculous business use case but maybe it works for some companies and then within that that is going to be part of my table or model from now on and i can collect that information on each sales order anyway i'll leave it up to you what you would do if you could add additional fields for each table but it's definitely something that is much more difficult to do in platforms like quickbooks or sage okay but coming back to our example the big thing about relational databases is we don't have just a bunch of information on the sales order. All I have here is my salesperson and my customer, which actually are their own records, right? Customer has an address, um, they have an email address, uh, they probably have a company that they're a part of, but all that information isn't on this spreadsheet. It's somewhere else. We get that information by leveraging this relationship here. In Odoo, we call this a relationship a many to one, which basically says that there can be many sales orders linked to one customer. So if we look at this, we've got Deco Addict, and you can see this already. We've got many sales orders for Deco Addict, and all of them are linked to our record over here, Deco Addict, which could bring in whatever other information we want to bring in. Now, you may be thinking, hey, I'd love to just have all my information in the same place. Leave me alone. I like spreadsheets. The problem with spreadsheets or having everything in one sheet in that way and trying to have the customer and the address and all that other stuff there too, is that if I go to update the address for the customer, I have to update every single sales order. 
that's a major pain in the butt. You don't have to do that with relational databases. It's all about efficiency and making sure when we update data, we only have to update it in one place. Now, many to one fields are actually pretty awesome because inside of Odoo, we can use those to pull in related fields if we want to see them in a specific view. If you're not sure what I mean, let me show you. So say on this sales order, I want to see the customer's email address. I know it's right here and I can click into it and I can see that for Deco Addict right here, I've got an email address. But what if I wanna see it specifically on this sales order? Well, again, that is super easy with Odoo. We go into Studio and I can go into this and I can pull up a related field. So related fields essentially leverage one of these relationships that I have here, customer being one of them. Well, I'm going to go to customer here and I'm going to click the little arrow and I'm gonna say for the customer that's set right here, I want to see their email. So it's gonna go ahead, bring that over, leveraging that relationship and give me the email address on this customer. So I'm gonna call this guy email so it keeps it nice and clean. But now I can see that information in this view instead of having to click back into it. So again, we've got two tables that are connected here and we're just pulling that information through that connection. But we have another type of connection that is adequately represented in sales orders and that is our one to many. So the funny thing about a one to many is it's really just the other side of a many to one. So if we look at our sales order lines here, okay, we're going to have lots of sales order lines for each sales order. That means that we have lots of additional products at a certain quantity that we're providing to a customer that's represented here. But you can see that for sales order 29, we have four sales order lines that are connected there. So, on the sales order side, this is going to be represented as a one to many field. That means there is one sales order connected to many sales order lines. And then on the other side for sales order lines, it's a many to one, meaning that many of these sales order lines can be connected to one sales order. Just to make sure we're all on the same page here, the way that's represented in a form view is that we have the top level record, right? The sales order with our one to many field right here. And we get all the information from that other table or model coming in and being represented here. So product, quantity, delivered, invoiced, unit price, all of these are actually on our sales order lines table. So again, many to one and one to many are basically two sides of the same coin, okay? Before you can do a one-to-many relationship, you have to set up a many-to-one on the child record. So in this instance, you would have to set up a many-to-one on the sales order lines before you could set up the one-to-many on the sales order, okay? And it occurs to me that it would be good to show you how this works so that you can put it into practice for yourself. So I'm gonna show you real quick in studio how we can set that up. So let's go ahead and create a brand new one to many for our sales order here. So what we need to do first is we need to have another table that we want to see here. Okay. So I'm going to create a brand new table or model. We're going to say edit menu, new menu, and we're going to call this order lines two. Okay. So this is a second level of order lines that we're going to do. Again, not a great business use case, but it's good to show you how this works. So we want to leave this on new model. Odoo is going to create a brand new model or table for us with this all, you know, without us doing anything too crazy. So we're going to pull this up here just so I can have it. And I'm going to put it under my other sales order lines that I'd like to see. Confirm that. Then we're going to come into orders, order lines V2 or order lines two. Um, description. Great. That's, that's great. I'll leave that. And then I'm going to add a many to one here that gives me a link to my sales order right here. So we're going to go ahead and confirm that. And I'm going to say sales order. All right. So now I, I set up that many to one, which is this guy. Now I can do a one to many on the sales order. So we're just going to go back to orders, orders. We're going to go to view form. Okay, so we're back in our sales orders. I like to use the tabs for this, so I'm gonna add one here. 
and this is just going to be order lines two. Go ahead and click away from that. And then we're going to add inside of here, click add, and we're going to add our one to many. Okay. And you can see right now it's saying select the reciprocal many to one field, meaning we've got to have our many to one first. So let's look for this and we're going to go to search more because I like doing that better. That makes my life a little bit easier. So you can see this new model is order lines two. That's my connection right there. I'm going to go ahead and confirm that. Okay. And then I'm going to make sure this is named something nice. I'm going to say order lines two. And because I don't like the way this gets set up as default, I'm going to go into view XML and I'm going to get rid of these groups right here so that it just basically fills up that whole page or tab. So we're going to save that, close it. And now you can see I have my nice little order lines two right here. And when I add something here, it's going to automatically link it to that sales order. I don't really need that second column, but we're going to say nice new order line and go ahead and save and close. That adds it here. And I'm going to make sure I've got this set up properly so that I can bring this across. So yeah, you can see it automatically assigns it to the sales order. And when I come back over to order lines too, yep, you can see that's all linked up. So we now have a new one to many on our orders, okay, that we set up a many to one first so that it could link up. Okay, so there's one final type of relationship that we can have between our tables or models. This is called a many to many, and the best example for this, generally speaking, inside of Odoo is when it comes to tags. So if we're talking about sales orders, I could say this sales order could have a lot of different tags. And each tag could have a lot of different sales orders. That's what a many to many is, right? It's not just saying, okay, it can only be linked to one on one side and then the other side gets, you know, as many as it wants. It's as many as we want on either side. Another many to many relationship is me to you guys, right? And if you want to improve that relationship, go ahead and click like and subscribe and our relationship will just get that much stronger. So, one of my favorite use cases for many to many's is if I have a list of people that I want to notify when something happens about the sales order. So yes, I do know we've got followers, but this is a little bit easier to digest for a lot of people. So what we would say is we would say, okay, I want to see people to contact right here. So I'm going to put a many to many and we're going to say contacts for this or contact it's singular. We go ahead and confirm this and I would say people to contact. Okay. And inside of that, I don't really like this view right here, which showing each of the records and all their information. So we're going to change this from many to many to many to many tags, which again, tags. Yes. Love them. So we would come into this and we would say, okay, what people do I want to contact about this order? Well, Abigail Peterson, definitely. She's, you know, needs to know about these things, AKA Foster. I can even come into this little search more right here and I can just start checking boxes. It's kind of nice. So again, the beauty of this is that Abigail Peterson can be on as many sales orders as I want. Okay. And that way I don't have to worry about her just being linked to one sales order. I can contact her about as many as I want. And because this is a relationship, I can dig into this and I can say for each of these guys, I want their email address or for each of them, I want their physical address and we can contact them that way. Okay. So that's all well and good. But Andrew, what about that burning question that you mentioned at the beginning of the video? Well, here it is. If I'm coming in and messing around and this says customer deco addict and I come into this and I say, oops, we're going to call them deco addicted now. What happens with all the sales orders that are connected to this? Are we going to end up with a problem? The answer is no. And you may have already known this, but you may not have known why. Another key tenet of each relational database is that each record or each line on a table or model has a unique ID. Let me show you how this shows up inside of Odoo because Odoo with this export is just trying to do us a favor. It's like, you don't just want a number here. You want to see the name of the customer, right? And they are right. But let's look at this a little bit closer. So if I go out to sales orders 
and I come into this and say, okay, I want to see all my sales orders again, and let's go ahead and export them. But for the customer, I want to see their ID to get a bit more information and understanding here. So we're going to bring in our customer.id, and customer has a lot of different fields, so it's going to take us a second to find this. So that's going to be our customer ID right there. Okay, we're going to go ahead and export that and save. Okay, and then what we're going to do is we're going to go back in and we're going to grab our contacts and include in our contacts our ID there too. So let's go to contacts. We're going to grab all of our friends here. Actions, export. We're going to grab our ID and add that here. Okay. And I don't really need the avatar or the stats, thanks. Let's go ahead and export that. And bring that up. Okay, so we have our two separate tables here, but we're peeking behind the curtain because now we see that the specific unique ID for Abigail Peterson is 46, okay? So if we come back into our sales orders here and look at it, Deco Addict is saying, and it's way over here, that its customer ID is number nine, right? So inside Excel, and this is the little bit more that you can understand about Excel here, we're gonna go ahead and do what's called an X lookup. So we're looking up nine. So we're looking for nine in this next range here. Nine is going to be in our contacts here. We're gonna look in column A for nine. And then what we want to get back is column B, okay? So looking at this, you can see number nine is Deco Addict, okay? Then we have Gemini Furniture. They bought a lot from us, Lumber Inc. right here. Your company, Joel Willis, the reason he didn't come across is because he's archived, okay? That's another thing you wanna understand about exports is this guy is not going to come out if he's archived, but the sales order, we still wanna see that for historical purposes. But anyway, hopefully it makes a bit more sense here why when you make changes on a record, everything remains linked up. It's because what's really stored on this table for sales orders isn't this. This is the name of the customer, but the customer ID is what's really here, okay? So really what I'll do is saying is customer nine, pull the name and show that instead. So there you have it. That's relational databases, especially as they relate to Odoo. Now you're gonna be a lot better inside of Odoo. You're gonna understand things a lot better and you'll be able to navigate through, import better and customize it better for your company. As always, if you have questions, drop them in the comments below. Love hearing from you guys. Or if you want some time with just me and you so we can go over some stuff, go ahead and grab some time in my Calendly. I also have courses if those appeal to you. So if you want to check those out, those are also linked in the description. Anyway, thanks again, guys. I appreciate you stopping by and hope it's been helpful to you. Have a good one.